So, hello guys and girls, um, <coughs> sorry, my name is Shumsky and uh, I will today tell you how to set up Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets for PC uh, so you can uh, start it and set it up for speedrunning. So, we have a few things that we have to do. Uh, before we do anything, of course, we need to download the game, and I will indeed uh, get you a link in the description uh, for a file where that we can download the game at, um, and then you should be able to uh, get that sorted out. After we install the game, we uh, actually uh, will install it in whatever, wherever you want. Uh, we must do a few things. First of all, we need to create a shortcut on our desktop. So that for me would be game.exe shortcut or something like that. And this is uh, where we start actually um, the proper tutorial. So if we right click on the desktop shortcut and you go to properties and uh, we look at the shortcut properties, we can see the target of uh, this. Uh, we can see the target of the uh, current game and in this space here we should type in uh, let, me just check. let me just quickly do that all right we should type in there we should type in dash windowed yes so that's what we should type in this space here uh by the way you so you press space you actually put a space be right here space dash window okay uh, and this will start the game in windows mode and it will start in a default res resolution of 640 by 480 and uh this is okay for the time being but um <coughs> we uh will need uh, we will need also to alter a few things there. Additionally, uh, due to be able to make one uh, particular glitch in the game that is probably the most game-breaking glitch in this game, we need to put a shortcut key. So, uh, for me, for instance, what what is a shortcut key? So, once you press a key on your keyboard, that would launch that shortcut for that application or program or whatsoever. And we need to do that. Uh, myself, I prefer usually just put that on F1, I put that on F1, the shortcut key, F key, so you can put it at anything that's uh, easy for you, but you will need to do that. Uh, that's all done with the shortcut bit, and uh, I'm just going to quickly explain that. So this is if you want to open the game uh, normally by double clicking it. Uh, this is what happens when I just press F1, well, obviously uh, that's what we want to do. Now. Uh, the, the game's uh, save files and all of the stuff that we need to alter additionally are in the documents section uh, usually so if you go to documents your documents folder and you should be able to see uh, pretty much uh, a folder here that's called Harry Potter so let me just quickly, uh, quickly do that and Harry Potter 2 and Harry Potter 2 is what we're going to be looking at. Uh, additionally, right now, what we go, what we want to change here is that we should be able to see save file detect it, uh, dot ina uh, game dot ina game dot ina that file right here is what we are actually looking into uh, changing. And if we right click on that, and obviously and uh, go all the way here so uh, it doesn't matter anyway uh, this will open the the IRA uh, document for our for the game and this is where we change a few things and we save a few values so first thing that we wanted to actually change and is uh, with the, with the resolution. 
We want the resolution to be more than 640 than 480 and specifically what we want to be the uh, the resolution to be for instance I have it um, at 640 by 512 or 513. Why do we do that is because um, I'm gonna quickly I'm gonna actually show you why why do we do this. So if I change the default uh, to the the default viewport viewport for Y to 480, uh, you can see that and you can change the window to, uh, window to actual the window to resolution uh, at Win Drive. This um, so give me a second. Uh, you can pause actually. Here. So when you see that in the INA, uh, like for instance, this is what you're gonna see: Win Drive, Windows Client, and then you see Windows Viewpoint, Viewport X 640, and then same thing: the Windows Viewport Y 480. So we change that to 480. Sorry, that bit here. Uh, two seconds. My apologies. So if we have that at 480, the game will uh, look like this. So we save this file. The game will look normally like this. Just two seconds. Uh, load game, doesn't matter what you're gonna load. Like this, for instance. So your game window will uh, look something like uh, this here. That that is your game window. Uh, but if we change the viewport Y to five hundred and twelve, um, and we <coughs> so let me just quickly change that. 512 save the game will look now uh, slightly different so the it's actually extended a little bit further down and why do you want that is right now the menu we can see behind the menu so we can see that bit here uh, why do you want that is because when we do that particular glitch as i was going to explain to you we uh, actually need to hmm, we actually need to uh, see what's happening behind the menu screen uh, so that's that now the other thing that we want to do in the ANI is uh, actually when we practice our speed running we can scroll all the way down here all the way all the way down to the ANI and we should be able to see this thing da, da, da. We'll be able to see uh, this thing here that these few lines H game dot base console B debug mode equals false, B use system false equals true. When we practice, we want to put that on true, and this pretty much uh, allows you to use the console to quick save, quick load, uh, go through different levels, use no clip, uh, and etc. 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 Basically, this is uh, you put that on true uh, only when you're uh, practicing because this is just allows you to be a little bit more mobile uh, with the game. But when you're actually doing run, you keep that at false. B debug mode at false. Anyway, so uh, wait, okay, I'll cancel that part a bit. And that's pretty much all we what we want to do here in uh, the game AI. That's fine. Uh, right. So that's all done. The game is all set for running and stuff like that. We have one last thing to do. We have to uh, cap the f uh, game's frames to uh, 60. Because this is an actual requirement in the run, uh, your frame rate to be at 60, and it is preferable to it to be shown. The best way to do it is by using DX Story, that program right here, which is actually a video capturing uh, video capturing software. 
and once we have dx story we'll be able to set up for it like what do we what do we want to do is that uh we ignore pretty much everything here and uh it will recognize the game but on its own so we want to go to advanced we want to go to the advanced tab and then we want to go to limit video fps type the value of 60 here and tick it uh right and that's pretty and that's pretty much it dx story is a paid program so it's up to you if you want to uh, pay for for it and pay for a license or um, you know I, i'm not gonna judge you can actually get uh, torrented from somewhere that's up to you i don't care but you should have dx story and you should cap the frame rate and you should be able to show it so how does that look is when we launch the game and basically what to do is load game bank we load the game uh sometimes it will not limit it straight away so what you can do is oops sorry not quidditch you can go to the video settings of the game and change the color depth when you change the color depth it will make the story pretty much just apply that fps cap and that's pretty much it that's all you need for now that's how you set up the game and you are ready to play it and start speed running it Thank you for uh, watching this tutorial. I hope it was good enough. I know I may not be explaining very well. I've been saying a lot of, you know, like non words, like, uh, uh, da, da, but it's okay. I'm kind of like doing that on the fly just before work. So, anyway, doesn't matter. Uh, I'll do a full tutorial of how to play that game and what we can do. Uh, and uh, hopefully, you will enjoy and know how to do it and how to actually speedrun Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Uh, as a beginner, I think I should be able to teach you pretty much very well. Okay, thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.